The biggest reason why people get gout is because their body is making too much of a substance called uric acid. Now, why does the body make uric acid? Well, uric acid is a metabolic byproduct of fructose, meaning sugar, as well as alcohol. So the more sugar you eat or drink, the more that your liver is going to convert that into uric acid. It's going to convert the fructose into uric acid. Drinking alcohol also increases uric acid in the body in two ways. One is because it impairs the kidney's ability to eliminate uric acid from the body. And the second is that some alcohol, particularly beer, is high in purines, which are then broken down into uric acid. So sugar and alcohol are the two biggest reasons why people have high levels of uric acid in their blood, medically termed hyperuricemia. So if you don't want to get gout, the two most important things that you can do is to minimize your consumption of sugar and alcohol. Yes, there are foods that are high in purines and therefore raise uric acid levels, things like red meat and seafood, but they won't raise uric acid levels to the same extent that fructose and alcohol do. Now let's get a little more specific as to why sugar leads to gout. First things first is that not all sugar is created equal. In other words, sucrose, lactose, and maltose, all of these are simple sugars, meaning they're disaccharides, but they're not the same. So lactose is the milk sugar. It's made up of one part glucose and one part galactose. And then we have maltose, which is made up of one part glucose and one part glucose. So it's two uh, glucose molecules fused together. Then we have sucrose, which is the sugar that is in fruit and other sweet things. It's made up of one part glucose and one part fructose. Then we have high fructose corn syrup, which is actually a mixture of individual glucose and individual fructose molecules in about a 50-50 ratio. But sometimes it's actually a little more fructose than glucose. Eating too much glucose is bad, but not nearly as bad as eating too much fructose. In fact, Fructose causes seven times the amount of oxidative stress in the body compared to glucose. And fructose is the biggest driver of insulin resistance. Let's say you eat something that has added sugar or fruit juice or soda or candy or a dessert like ice cream or cookies. That's fructose that you're eating. The intestines absorb that fructose and it goes straight to your liver. You don't have to understand all these biochemical reactions that I'm showing you right now. One of those byproducts is uric acid, and this production of uric acid ends up inhibiting nitric oxide production, which causes our blood pressure to go up. This is why most people who have gout, they also have high blood pressure. The other thing that happens with fructose metabolism in the liver is that if there's too much fructose, the liver ends up converting it into fat, as well as other molecules that trigger inflammation. In fact, high uric acid levels prevent our mitochondria from metabolizing pyruvic acid to carbon dioxide, which forces the liver to turn excess energy into liver fat. Now, if this happens over and over again, more and more fat is deposited, as well as the development of leptin and insulin resistance. Now, when you have this chronic inflammation and resistance to leptin and insulin, your cravings in the hypothalamus of your brain become more intense. So you end up eating more sugar as a result. And so this cycle, it continues. And at this point, most people are addicted to sugar and can't break the cycle. So it's no coincidence that most people who have gout, they also have all of the other chronic metabolic conditions, most of them, that go along with insulin resistance, such as type 2 diabetes or prediabetes, metabolic syndrome, high triglyceride levels, high blood pressure, and more. In fact, in the old days, it was mostly royalty and kings and aristocrats who would get gout because those were the people who would drink the most alcohol and feast on the most delightful foods, including fancy desserts, at a time when sugar was an expensive and very rare commodity. But today, sugar is dirt cheap and it's everywhere. Added sugar is in 75% of the food on grocery shelves. It's recommended that people eat no more than 25 grams of added sugar per day or free sugar per day, but the average American consumes three times this amount. So it's no wonder why 88% of American adults have some degree of metabolic illness, whether it's something obvious like type 2 diabetes or something that is not so obvious that lurks under the radar like high triglyceride levels. Now, uric acid levels above 5.5 indicate that there's mitochondrial dysfunction and insulin resistance. 
Two other lab markers that strongly suggest insulin resistance include high fasting insulin levels and high fasting triglycerides. The higher your uric acid levels, the more likely you are to develop gout and other manifestations of insulin resistance. So it's best to minimize sugar and alcohol consumption.